The 36th Fighter Squadron is the United Empire of Earth's premier active duty Gladius unit. First bloodied against the Tavaran, the 36th has seen action in every significant human conflict in the past 300 years. The 36th has its origin in one of the most embarrassing military disasters in Earth history. In 2571, the battle carrier UEES Olympus pursued a band of pirates and rebels home to their hiding place in the undeveloped Null system. The carrier's complement vastly outmatched their foe, but the admiral in charge wanted in on the kill personally. He ordered the Olympus into a pass that was too close to the system's fifth planet, Ashana. The Olympus was caught in the planet's gravity, impacted on the world's surface, and lost with only a few survivors. Those survivors included the carrier's combat air patrol, four stiletto interceptors, the immediate predecessor to the Gladius, belonging to the carrier's defensive complement, plus two others who managed a scrambled launch as the ship went down. Taking quick advantage of their unbelievable shift in fortune, the rebel forces rallied to eliminate the remaining ships and lifeboats. The battle that followed was spectacular. The six light fighters were able to hold off their attackers for almost an hour, scoring an astounding 37 confirmed space-to-space -space kills, including a pocket destroyer, with only their surviving energy weapons. All six UEEN fighters were ultimately eliminated, as were all who escaped the initial crash, but the black box recorder belonging to Lieutenant J.G. Jasmine Tuttle was ultimately recovered by an enterprising pirate and sold to her family on Earth. Seeing an opportunity to cover the embarrassing and costly loss of the Olympus, Naval High Command's propaganda machine broadcast the recording and made martyrs of the fighter pilots. The result was a series of patriotic advertisements about doing your duty, a melodramatic government-sponsored holovid featuring an array of D-list actors and stereotypical fighter pilots and the establishment of the 36th Fighter Squadron in honour of the pilots who fought the last stand at Null. The 36th Fighter Squadron formally came online on January 1st, 2579, equipped with the first production run of Gladius fighters. Fast and manoeuvrable but carrying a light weapons load, the Gladius was the UEEN's first choice for interception duties. Prior to the unit's establishment, patrol units were generally considered second-class citizens. Taking a backseat to better equipped jack-of-all-trades units, these squadrons were generally assigned draftees and OCS pilots rather than academy graduates and volunteers. The first charge to the 36th was changing this standard by grouping the best of the best interceptor veterans to train the patrol elements of other squadrons. That charge changed drastically with the start of the Second Tavaran War in 2603. Within hours of the formal declaration of hostilities, the Wing had received orders to the front. Quickly transitioning to an active combat role, the 36th Fighter Squadron found itself dispersed among four escort carriers charged with providing cover for Messer's main battle force. Despite early Tavaran successes against human capital ships, None of the warships assigned Gladius coverage from the 36th suffered a single torpedo strike during the full course of the Seven Year War. With combat successes under their belts, the squadron never resumed their training role. Since the rise in Vandal attacks, the 36th has found itself cycling through assignments on the frontier regularly. It was a 36th Fighter Squadron Gladius element commander, Captain Jordan Toothpick Hampton, who first developed the three-fighter carry-and-leap technique for countering the more muscular Vandal Scythe. And it was a 36th Fighter Squadron replacement pilot who first noticed the slight infrared scanner irregularity that allowed UEE pilots to target early scythes hidden in asteroid fields. While high-powered Hornets can steamroll through Scythe squadrons today, this was not the case in the early days of the conflict. For roughly the first decade of Vandal raids, Destroying or disabling a scythe took both extreme manoeuvring and a high degree of communication among wingmen. The first was a speciality of the Gladius's design, and the second something well ingrained in the highly trained men and women of the 36th. The squadron's most celebrated action against the Vandal took place relatively recently, on August 3rd, 2940. 
A force of 12 Gladius fighters was ordered to provide close escort for a civilian Hull Sea transport, ferrying survivors from a recent Vandal strike. During the course of the planned escort run, the group improbably wandered into the largely undefended rear of a Vandal supply fleet. By managing fire control through the Hull Sea and operating as a cohesive unit, the lightly armed force of Gladius was able to quickly eliminate nine fully laden mule transports and their light escort screen. The incident, coming on the heels of several disastrous Vandal raids, was played up heavily in the media. Elements of the 36th Fighter Squadron are presently forward deployed aboard the UEES Sebek. Little information is available about their current mission against the Vandal, although the consistency with which 36th Fighter Squadron pilots appear in weekly casualty lists indicates that battle is joined frequently. The Wing has also been essential in anti-piracy operations, with a number of these operations better known. Despite the military's highly publicised, battle-ready campaign to revitalise older space frames, observers are unanimous in believing that the ship has less than a decade of active service remaining. The final Gladius service pack was issued eight months ago, improving weapons systems and control surfaces, and no additional upgrades have been contracted. With the Gladius being increasingly assigned to reserve wings, guard units and home defence squadrons, the era of these acrobatic light fighters serving as the tip of the sword is coming to an end. High-level scuttlebutt suggests that the 36th may be one of the first elite units to transition to the F-8A Lightning heavy fighter. It is a prospect the squadron's pilots aren't exactly happy about, after generations of proving that a great deal can be accomplished with the simplicity of a light fighter few are eager to adopt the most complex piece of military equipment in human history. What's this? A Toby Eye Tracker ad? Exactly what you wanted. The Toby Eye Tracker gives you natively supported high precision head and eye tracking for Star Citizen and a load of other games for that matter. This is perfect for greater immersion in Star Citizen, for looking around your cockpit while in combat or just quantum traveling around the verse. There's a load of cool bits like Toby Ghost so you can see where eyes are looking or other people can if you're recording it or showing it to like viewers or whatever. But also you got camera boost which is like mouse acceleration for your head. Until the 28th of October, you can grab 15% off by using the link below. There's also a sweepstake running where you can grab yourself a Star Citizen ship and start a pack. Again, links below. Now, back to the video. Every month, we have a ship giveaway. For October, it's for a Drake Corsair with a game package and lifetime insurance. All you have to do to be in for a chance of winning that lovely Star Citizen access and ship that can be used for exploration, but it's also this cool little multi-role, multi-crew ship. You just need a comment on any of our videos made during October. That will go into the hat. It's not a hat, it's, it's a spreadsheet. It goes into that, and then a random person is chosen. With the addition of Alpha 4.0 and Pyro, there's going to be tons more to see and explore. The Corsair is perfect for that. Good luck. Please consider supporting the channel as well. We've got the join button under our videos that will make you a channel member. That goes a long way in supporting the channel, as does becoming a Patreon. It's pretty much the same thing, but for different mediums. You can also like, comment, share, or sub. Things like that. That all helps with the channel hugely. We are also gathering questions for Citizen Con, so chuck those in the comments below as well. If I find any appropriate devs, I will ask your question, or I, I will probably amalgamate lots of questions together and make them more concise. Thank you so much for your support and watching, and I hope you have a great October.